at Sports City. <laughs> oh, at Sports City. Oh, I forgot about the Jesse the Sports City. Ah! <clears throat> Don't be like me and mess up at sport settings. I noticed compression problems when I got YouTube videos on a TV, not so much on mobile devices. You can barely tell unless it was a scene with a lot of information here. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is with very low and not quite up to standard compression settings because YouTube's gonna compress on top of your compression. So very easy fix here in Premiere Pro. When you've got a project, you just go up to file export media to open up your export or quick key hotkey command m and that's going to bring up your export as well let's start with h264 i'm going to go down to since this was a 1080p clip in this video very important is about 1080p clips i am going to name it yeg talking very important to name your clips and let you know where you're going to be sending those to for outputs the audio is going to start off pretty much where you want it 4800 hertz stereo audio quality high bit rate on 320 the video here's what a tweaking's gotta happen 1920 by 1080 square pixels that is fine profile high a-ok -okay. there is also an option for high 10 that's a little bit more for 4k that's where all that tweaking comes from level 4.2 that is a-ok -okay. here's where i was having some issues constant bit rate and variable bit rate. For some reason, I left it on constant bit rate for the longest time and just roll with that. And it starts off at 16. We're gonna double that a little bit, but we're gonna do it with variable bit rate pass too. Everybody's got a different number. It's around 32. The variable bit rate is around 40. So you might be saying, why don't you just jack it all the way up? Because it kind of don't really get that quality when it's streaming on YouTube. Also, the other problem that you can have is a way larger file size, which is just gonna be absolutely ridiculous to deal with. So you kind of want to deal with good compression at a good file size. For 1080p, it seems like target bit rate of 32 and maximum bit rate of 40 is where that kind of lands for a lot of people. Constant bit rate is just what it sounds like. It's gonna be constant. Variable bit rate is going to change the bit rate. Some scenes can require more information for the computer to pick up and to render out and to just have information on screen for the codec, for streaming. <laughs> So one pass, it just goes in one pass. Two, it checks for the scenes and analyzes, and then it exports the video. That will be the two pass. Keyframe distance, unchecked. It's not a VR video. I will use maximum render quality. Let's use previews. That is a very interesting one to bring up. I don't really need it for this situation, but it can work with ProRes and some other files that you're using. Some people still will shoot in one format, like H.264, and then convert to ProRes. That used to be how you had to do things back in the Final Cut 7 days. I don't see, since the SL2 has such an easy to work with codec, you don't really have to do that, but it used to make it a lot easier in your machine. And also, some of your effects can be in ProRes, so you can use the previews there, and that can tie into rendering. I will link to somewhere on the internet that will sort out the Use Previews buttons somewhere in the description for you to check out for more detail. And another important thing to do, come up and save your export. I'm gonna go with Jaeger's <laughs> YouTube 1080p export. Go in and save that and boom, voila, you're done. Hopefully this looks a little bit better. I've tried this technique with this very video and if you can kind of tell a difference, yes. If not, then sorry. It's just a lot of drama for nothing, wasn't it? Hit that like button if you like and subscribe. Pretty please, it really does help us out. To JaegerShots.com to never ever miss a shot. <laughs> ah! <laughs>